Thank you for taking this bottom-up journey with us. It has really been our privilege. I do want to conclude by saying one thing, that when we look around the world, it seems like many people's lives are perceived to be a lot cheaper than others' lives. Well, this is a reality, but it's not a reality that we should ever accept. We should always try to fight it. And that has certainly been the underlying motivation to create this kind of learning experience. Your role in fighting for those who are at the bottom of society and in confronting some of the global challenges we face will be critical to our planet and to people as well. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk about a three-step process that I think of in terms of business for good or in terms of good at a personal level as well. The first step is to develop understanding of subsistence marketplaces. The second step is to design solutions for subsistence marketplaces. But there is a third step as well, because the same solutions that we find in subsistence marketplaces are needed in advanced economies as well. Think about telemedicine. In advanced economies, we needed this during the pandemic. But telemedicine is quite advanced in places like Ghana, where there is not a health infrastructure. Think about M-Pesa and financial transfers, quite advanced compared to even advanced economies. Similarly, in terms of good at the personal level, exposure is education, and exposure and understanding enable us to get a sense of what to be good about, and what is good, and what is good gone bad. So again, the first step is to understand subsistence marketplaces. The next step is to use this understanding in some way. And the third step is to incorporate that good in whatever we do as well. The idea of giving back is good, but perhaps it needs to be replaced by the idea of giving as we take. So when it comes to global challenges, understanding of marketplaces can lead to innovative solutions. Markets are not black and white. Reality is messy. There are both win-wins and trade-offs between business for good and good for business. And we believe that business for good is the common denominator in trying to meet global challenges. So our journey has involved the what of subsistence and sustainability, the how of being bottom up, and the why of business being a force for good. Let us look at some images. You see this image from Mozambique, and sitting in North America, it seems far away. It's happening, but I think it's not going to happen to me, and it's not happening to me, of course. So immediately in my mind, there is a distance between what I'm seeing and who I am and where I live. Here you're looking at this image of a polar bear and melting glaciers, and now I'm thinking it's a little bit closer. It's happening, but not necessarily far in the future. And it seems to be happening quite close to North America, where I am. And then I look at Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, I look at the Gulf oil disaster, and it all seems a lot closer to me as well. These events have happened close to home, and they can certainly happen again. So this leads to the ultimate conundrum that in subsistence marketplaces, people live their environment despite low literacy and low income. They have to envision the medium term to survive. If they cut down the trees, they don't have the firewood. In advanced marketplaces, we think these problems are far away, even though we have the ability and the resources to envision the longer term. So in subsistence marketplaces, people may be unable but willing to address these challenges. In advanced marketplaces, we are able, but are we willing? Can we bridge these distances in our minds to create innovations? And we believe that business for good will be at the heart of such innovations. An anonymous quote is that the challenge of education is to prepare students for their future, not our past. And that is something that has motivated us in providing this learning experience.